Yo, 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 what is up everyone? It's Mini TV here coming at you again. Um, today I've just got a little quick uh, coaching session that I did um, a couple of days ago and I wanted to post it to you because um, I know you guys have been enjoying my coaching sessions posted on YouTube. Um, this one's on uh, mid lane concepts, um, guys playing like Ember and I talk about Void Spirit. We talk about all kind of the different concepts and when you should be farming, when you should be fighting, you know, different uh, intricate matchups um, and uh, hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy it. So other than that, We'll get straight to it. Peace. On Discord. Yeah, I can see. Sweet, sweet. Let me okay. give you the game ID. Yeah, no worries. This is the game ID. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you are playing the... What are you playing again? I'm playing Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit, but uh, just slowly, uh, yeah. Okay. So you're laning uh, against... Was it an OD? Yeah, it looks like an OD, yeah? Yeah. yeah okay. Cool. So I, I wanted to kind of... Mm -hmm. Do you know... Uh, do you know the matchup? Pretty well or anything yeah, like quite low, quite well. Um, like, how how do you feel that the matchup goes between Ember Spirit and uh, OD? Just... Uh, from my, just from my experience playing. Some yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're saying like you should like in the lane or in the game because those are two different things. Uh, in in the well, I feel like Od kind of wins post level four. Uh, level four. Mm -hmm. I just because once well in the lane he can just ash you deny your range creep every time. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's, I feel like in the game it, it gets mitigated a bit, but if yeah. he ever catches you with ult, then you just die, but it's also, also kind of tough to catch Ember Spirit. Yeah. So, so I think in the lane he wins. Yeah. That's, that's kind of, the, that's, that's the gist really. Normally like OD has like a, a, a favorite matchup in the lane, but normally in the mid game, like normally you can kind of out, normally out farm him, you can kind of out like team yeah. fight him, like, and you're a lot more mobile obviously, and that's mm -hmm. the kind of effect you have. Um, but you do oh, have, a, you do have a very low mana pool, so you do have to be careful. But once you do get like BGB, which is probably in a game against Ember, uh, OD, you normally always need to get a BKB because he can blow you up. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the, the the basic gist of it. Um, but there is definitely some like tips and tricks you can do in the lane against OD um, to make the lane not as bad. Um, but uh, we'll we'll talk about him as we go through. But yeah, but just like keep in mind that obviously like the a uh, very basic kind of thing is that if you can't really do too much to OD in lane, like it doesn't matter or it doesn't matter who you're playing against, like if you can't really do too much in in the lane against whoever you're playing against, just having an idea and understanding of okay, I just need to get my items and then I can play the game kind of thing. Um okay. so uh my, go on. Mm -hmm. what was you uh, my initial thought process in this laning phase is I know that it's gonna be very tough for me to Secure range creeps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, if he's astroling me correctly. Yeah. Um, I also know that if if uh, he ever statics the wave on his uh, high ground, it's going to be tough for me to loss it. Also, without take like other, I'll be taking significant damage. Mm -hmm. So my whole idea was I'm going to try to bounce my lane like up and down the middle mm -hmm. as much as possible. Yeah. I don't know. That's like so generally what you want to yeah. do on. But unfavorable matchups. Right? So I mean, having having a ward like definitely helps because even though like if he does stack your lane, you can still pull it to the to a point where you can kind of disrupt it. Like as long as you have a ward and you have the high ground, he should never really be able to stay completely because the lane is so short. Um, so like a clicking him and bringing it back. Obviously, he has Asher and stuff, which does screw you over. But you know, if he uh -huh. did, after he uses it once, there's not much you can do it afterwards. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of like you have to tank the initial Asher and then go from it. Um, so just quickly talking about your initial. Um, item build here. Um, I'm not necessarily against it because Russian bottle uh, on Ember is good because you need the regen. But I mean, just even just pulling up a like any kind of pro Ember spirit replay will sort of show you. Normally they um, they just try and maximize. Um, starting items in terms of having high amounts of stats like you started with salve which you know it's fine you'll just kind of rush the bottle but normally what they'll see is they'll go fairy fire then they'll go maybe one ironwood branch and then maybe build into like one wraith band 
To be fair, Wraith Bands isn't, it's not particularly good on Ember because you don't really utilize the attack speed, but it's just because it's all about the having the early attack, like early stats. Yeah. Um, stats yeah. yeah, I mean, like, you have an advantage over OD um, just slightly, like, because you have the, the Fairy Fire, but, like, he has 60, you have 62. So having that extra bit of stats is always going to be really useful. Um, nice, and yeah. you have the, the, the Blade as well, but. Um, but yeah, and obviously once the bounty runes are sort of taken, like you can bring the salve out anyway. So it's kind of like having the salve in your inventory for like the first wave or two is kind of an inefficient thing because the salve doesn't help you. Like you're not going to use it for the first wave kind of thing. But once you bring it on the courier, then it will. Does that make sense? It's a, it's a small thing. But yeah. um, the mid lane, especially more so than other lanes, like any small efficiency thing like hat will be kind of emphasized and kind of abused as well. Um, so it's something you should definitely think about. Um, I, in in this matchup, I'm fine with you blocking as well. Like some matchups uh, where like either the lane yeah. is so, so obviously you're playing melee versus range, so your block is really really important. Um, but just uh -huh. in future matchups, if you're playing melee versus melee, especially the the block doesn't matter as much. So looking to maybe yeah. contest runes is something you can think about. But in this matchup, I think blocking is really more important than contesting any kind of runes. I, I generally um, block against the matchups that yeah. I know I'll have a hard time. Yeah, and then. That's fine. I didn't think about the melee thing. Yeah, it's just because obviously melee versus melee, like the high ground doesn't matter so much because obviously they, you know, you're yeah. not going to be trading. So, um, but this is fine. I mean, OD is kind of like um, getting harassed and stuff. So you you have like a decent yeah. advantage. You're going to have obviously you have it on your heel. Um, but let's just watch. Okay, this is all good. I sh I'm, he came to lane with like little. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is fine though. Like like. This kind of, to me, this first wave just shows me the mindset I want you to have, which is I can't really contest the OD because, like, either you go one point in Slight of Fist or Flame Guard, but because he's late to the lane, pushing out and getting all four is just perfect because, as we said yeah. before, like, you can't contest the OD, so getting your items and then playing the game afterwards is, is perfectly fine. And obviously, the quickest way to do that is just getting every CS you can in the lane and not worrying too much outside of that. Um but this is fine. Obviously, you got level two now, so you have four, four and oh, This is all good. Yeah, bit of harassment. This is all good. I'm, I'm a little unfamiliar with the new OD. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if she, to me she seems or like the OD seems a little weaker. I don't know if that's mm -hmm. true or not. Uh, it's um, a little bit weaker because the orbs aren't as sort of threatening in um, as before. But it's still kind of oh, for the most part, it's still the the same hero in, in lane. It's a little bit different yeah. in 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 the, in the game, but for the most part. Um, so. Uh, this is more so because of OD didn't block, but in scenarios like this, um, this is again perfect. So you obviously blocked it so much. So like, if we just go back to the first wave, and I don't mean to overanalyze yeah, I, I... one wave, but it is really really important. I'm just saying this is what you've done uh -huh. good. So like, so I've talked about how you lose this matchup, yeah. And sometimes you'll see uh, yeah. pro matchups when they're playing against a matchup they should lose, which in this in this sort of sense you probably should lose. Um. What you uh -huh. can either do is what you're looking for is what happens. In, yeah, no, is what you're looking for is in the second is the second wave. So this wave is fine. You push it the out and you. Go, but in the second wave, your as we sort of see, your creep wave will go into their tower. So basically, what what that yeah. ends up happening is that each wave is going to keep bouncing and ping ponging between your towers, and that is perfect uh -huh. for Ember, right? Because we've talked about how in yeah. your in, if the lane is static, OD can just astral you, take every range creep. But if it's under your tower and then under his tower, he never has the ability to play the lane. You're just almost trading yeah. creep waves, which for you is perfect. So obviously he comes late to the lane because he gets the bounty rune. You push the whole wave out, which is good. Uh, and then because you push it so quickly, what ends up happening is that your creep wave goes under their tower, and then it takes yeah. a while for the tower to kill it. So much so that for the second wave, it also goes under tower aggro, which is is perfect yeah. because then yeah you know you're just this wave's under tower it dies because it's in tower yeah. range and then the your wave which is coming up comes under your tower range and then the od can't really contest you which really is perfect um because obviously now this wave is under your tower and you should be getting basically everything you want from it obviously uh, which you basically do you, no. you you know you're gonna, you're gonna miss that one that's just fine um but it, yeah. it's a small thing but it's like you know, in matchups you should lose, and in matchups you don't want to play against, trading creep waves by pushing into their tower and then pushing back is perfect because then you're not really playing the lane, you're just playing the creep wave. Does that make sense? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, and obviously, all we t- we talked about is getting get all you want is getting the stuff you want from your lane, and then going from that. Like, good. This is good. Just getting aggro creeps. Um, you even dodge his W, which is perfect. Go aggro yeah, when he really takes it. This is all perfect. This is all good. Uh, again, you're pushing in the wave so much so that that it's gonna your second creep wave coming is gonna push into his tower as well, and you've already got your bottle. So basically, for me right now, this lane for you is basically one. Like the the first three or four creep waves is the most important, but you've already got your bottle, yes. um, which is okay. what you're going for. And this just goes back to your salve as well, not really being 100% needed. You know, like obviously you were fine, uh-huh. but like, do you see how this salve is basically useless because you you know you could have maybe got the few more stats early on. I mean, um, yeah. you would have bought the salve anyway from your courier because just buying one salve is good, um, but. It's just uh, something to think about. So uh, you go two points flame gold, which in this matchup I'm fine with. Normally most embers are maxing sleight of fist. Um, it's just kind of uh, because of the harassment you can dish out, but because you want the lane to be pushed out as quick as possible, yeah. flame gold does it faster I, than you. Um, I start maxing out my W after this. Point. Yeah, no, that's fine. So just to get harassed because yeah. I've noticed that I was um, doing well against him. Yeah. Um, um, can I uh, yeah, ask sure. a question? Ask, yeah, sure. Uh, so, I talk a lot, so just interrupt me if you've got a question. Just go with it. Yeah. So in a, let's say like a OD, um, in a position where the lane is bouncing like this, like how does he play it better? Yeah, and what he needs to do. can he correct? Yeah, so... Uh-huh. So, first of all, like, the first wave, like, it's understated, really, but the first wave is so really important because it kind of balances out the lane completely. And because he's late to the lane and he gives you it, I'm not saying it's over yeah. already, but it's very difficult for him to kind of bring it back because it then ping-pongs and there's nothing he can do to, to resolve that. Um, but yeah. a, a, as for, like, it, how this matchup should go is you both get a decent block, um, and then what will end uh-huh. up, every time you go for the range creep, he, he then just takes Astra Imprisonment. Um, but what okay. you... Um, and basically, he will wins not by killing you because he can't really kill you the way he wins is by yeah. having like every range creep denier so he's like a level and a half above you and maybe 10 cs above you in in the mid lane which yeah. it, from a from a static point of view that is winning but um i just uh-huh. want to briefly go back because what you were asking as well uh again something like you've done really well as well this is before then as well so he obviously astral you and so that's ba- basically when you play ember versus od it's like kind of playing and working around astral um so i think where is it so he he astrals you i think soon where, whenever it is and when he astral yes he astrals you here and then this is a perfect you just flame guard and uh, after this because you know he has this on cooldown for like 14 seconds so this creep wave uh-huh. is yours basically yeah because he can't astral you again yeah. so you you That's pressure him kinda... yeah yeah and this is good like this whether you think about it or not like you're you're just doing this kind of naturally it's really good and obviously you have the flame guard on so uh, you're not taking that much damage anyway perfect and you have salve and bowl um, but yeah, so how the matchup should go is that you know he should just be you know ten cs above you. Um, but right now, like your this laning phase is is kind of good, um, and because it's again kind of ping ponging, you can just get all you want. That's how I felt. I was very happy that it was continuing to do this yeah. when I was playing. Yeah. And that was what the intention that I had in mind, but yeah. I didn't realize that it would continue for this long. Like yeah, so you know, every single wave has been like this. Yeah, and that's kind of what you can do. So in in other map shops, uh-huh. um, I mean, I'd probably advise against doing it against an OD, but it's something you should maybe think about. So the first few waves, like you don't want to contest each other obviously like i said because he, he beats you out um but in other matchups so like some matchups for example say like a monkey king versus an ember where monkey king will beat you eventually um yeah uh sorry uh, it's just some official game uh that's okay sorry. um for some reason my keyboard is broken uh all right doesn't matter um so uh you, you were ping pong but like so uh not in very maybe this matchup, but normally so what you can do is um, if you want to stabilize the ping ponging, you can kind of hold the creeps, um, so you get back oh, yeah, back stagnant. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like, so perhaps yeah. say if you're playing against a a, a, um, a monkey king, where like the first few levels you can contest him, but afterwards you can't really contest him, and kind of similar in this OD matchup. Um, but in this one, like you just want every wave as much. But right now it's like back to normal, yeah. So assuming um, yeah. you're basically kind of even even CS, which in some ways is a win for you um there's a few miss cs there, here and there but that's just a pure mechanics thing what should happen in this matchup right now is what ideally you should do is it 
like in this static position here, instead of just going for a CS um, because he will just imprison you, you should A click him and draw your creeps to the range creep because what will happen is okay. when you do this, there your uh, melee creeps will go on to your uh, yeah. range creep and then uh, same with your melee creep goes on to their range creep. And when he imprisons yeah. you, he because there's so much distance, he, he either goes for the deny or he goes for your CS. So basically you end up like kind of nullifying each other's range creeps and thereby kind of nullifying his Astro imprisonment. If you don't do this, what will end up happening is that he will Astro imprison you and then get a deny on one of the creep waves. But at least you're trading, if that makes sense, and um, because he can't do both. Yeah. So in this from matchup, I mean, he he that's a mistake really from that him. Was, uh, that's a, yeah, yeah from him because now you just man up and like you can yeah. I think you south here as well, and you kill him. So that's a mistake just from him, yeah? But I'm just trying to give you um, information that would be important to know if you're playing against better players than, say, him, yeah? But it's a good re realisation that Astro Imprisonment is the only thing that kind of threatens you. When he uses it, you can man up on him, which is good. And... If um, if he uses on me on the melee creep wave, yeah. then um. Afterwards, couldn't I still secure the range CS? You can, yeah. So that's, yeah, yeah. So it, that's kind of like that's the two choices. Either you can let him do that deny for the mini creep and then go for the range. Uh -huh. The problem is, yeah. is that um, if he does that for the say like the melee and you run up to his ranged uh you, you should be in a you should be in a disadvantaged position because you've taken the damage from astral so if you go up to walk up to the range group he should just hit you like and and you you like so. you shouldn't really be able to get it in that respect obviously you can but oh. it's uh, it's because you're going to be taking four or five hits and if you're walking up to get the range group four or five hits it's not going to be a good trade altogether mm -hmm. but yes okay. you can do that if you have flame guard you know yada 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 you can um, uh -huh. just a small thing as well is when you play well when you play mid lane regardless but particularly when you have bottle, um, you need to be yeah. like better, like thinking specifically about uh, on, cue. on cue, like on the four minutes. In this case, it doesn't matter because you went for a kill and yeah. you killed him. But like you, if you uh -huh. sort of saw the rune, and like you can see the rune because you have bottle and you don't pick it up, and it's just a, a small efficiency play. But if uh -huh. you if you watch any yeah. kind of pro, like you get it here and stuff. But like right now, you could maybe maybe like denying these creeps, for example, or you know, uh -huh. it's a small thing. But like you know, it, like yeah. instead of like walking back to mid, you walk you walk, you walk bot. Um, for example, we get it. Um, but I would definitely recommend like watching um, pro replays because you see, particularly when they have bottles, you see how much they prioritize for the rooms. Yeah, I, I see um, them like on the dot. on the dot, or they're like contesting it by like yeah. using spells and stuff. In this matchup, it's not so bad because you killed him and stuff. But it's like particularly on a hero that relies um, so much for runes because that's your form of re regeneration. It's really really important. Yeah. Um, and this is fine as well. Like I'm fine with you sort of sitting sit mid as well. Like if you're like if that's a haste rune and you've already killed OD, maybe you can uh, go bot, you know, because they're like they're out of position or what. But um, without rotating into like a good kind of rule of thumb is never rotate to a side lane if you don't have boots or you don't have haste rune because it's just going to be a waste of time. Yeah, I've, um, uh, I've learned that the hard way. Yeah, it's just too much uh, inconsistency. And I mean, your job and role really is against this guy and stuff. So. Uh -huh. um, a, a tiny thing as well, like slight in here allows him to get the range creep. Um, like, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because uh, you do enough damage. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because it obviously, like, tower hits for range creep, like, you'll need to hit it once normally um, if you're below, like, 84 damage, yeah. which in this case, you're, like, on the verge, depending on whether it rolls high or not on the attack damage. Um, but when you slight here, obviously, like, he it hits twice and he can deny yeah. it. So it's a small thing, but, like, it, mm -hmm. things like that do pay off. So right now, you're level 6. Yes, yeah. You're, you know, this is good. Uh, this is fine. My reasoning for manning up is, like, I'm two levels yes, ahead. Yes, exactly. So. Yeah, yeah. And I... I Particularly when he uses Astro Imprisonment, uh, like you even look to maybe like Remnant on top of him and stuff, because like he, you want to force him out uh, oh, and experience yeah. his range, like because like without Astro Imprisonment, this guy is basically useless. So don't be afraid to like walk up, um, walk up almost question. into his face, okay. because when you get six on on Ember, basically you're like, the the hardest part of Ember is before level six and before bottle. But when you have those things, like you can play so aggressive. Uh, also, after those things, you play so aggressive. Like you can remnant, say maybe put a remnant behind you and walk up to him. So if someone TPs in, you can remnant out and force reactions. And it's all about kind of pushing yeah. the limits of your hero because if you're forcing rotations or forcing him to, you know, maybe use Astro Imprisonment or a salve or whatever, it, like it's all these kind of micro intensive things that 
forces course, yeah. um, the be the better kind of play because you know if you force a rotation from Shadow Shaman, then it helps your other lanes without even you rotating to there. You know, mm -hmm. um, but right now, yeah. if you ever like, if you you have this advantage, um, obviously you're going to rotate over here. This is fine. Um, This was a, yeah, little messy. a little bit messy, but you get the kill anyway. Yeah. It's all good. Like this is fine. Like, um, like if a, if a kill presents itself to you, like be my guest to go for it. But just keep in mind though as well, like like the CS that you could have almost had. Like you've, in my opinion, you've won the lane. Um, yet like the CS is still kind of almost in favour of the OD. Um, oh, and and that's that's from a few things really. One. I talked a little bit about perhaps maybe like controlling the wave on your hill so much so that whenever he uses um, Astral, you can walk up to him and threaten a kill. Or and also uh, it goes down to like the small efficiency plays. Um, and and uh, finally as well, it's to the point where you know if you have a level advantage over the OD, like he shouldn't be able to CS this much. Um, I see. Okay. And one thing I haven't seen you do as well is is not even think about um, camps. Steven stacking camps or farming camps. Yeah. So I mean, I, I didn't yeah. mention it because I was talking about other things. But if you, particularly if you're playing Radiant and you have a Quelling Blade, if you watch uh, you know any kind of melee pro mid player who has Quelling Blade, they before the lane even starts. So for the, yeah, for, they'll, cut they'll just cut this. If you're playing Radiant, especially, they'll just cut this camp here. So what you can do is like, which you had done a few times, like push out the wave with Flame Guard and then just walk up to to this melee uh, to this safe camp here. And it's these small things that will obviously increase your CS, but also increase your farming speed as well. Yeah, like you, you've done yeah. you've done the hard yeah. work in terms of kind of getting something out of the lane, which in in you might or you probably shouldn't get much in this lane, but now you've got something. Now just kind of maximise it, you know. Um, I see. So obviously runes at six minutes as well, and and it's all about timings really on 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 mid lane. Like you want to be doing it. Um, obviously, w w when you went for this gank over here, I, like do it. You know, go for it. I'm just saying that like there should be like a formula in your head that. Um, right, okay, sit like min on the minute rune. I need to be like contrasting runes, and before the minutes are, are up, I want to be pushing the minutes. pushing pushing the lane with 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 flame guard, so it's uncontested. Right, yeah. yeah. Um, obviously, when like ogre and Ricky walk up to like near your mid lane, obviously that's gonna mm -hmm. put like a, a spanner in your in your kind of formula or in your plan. But it it, it sh like you should still be going for it. If that makes sense. Like it just shouldn't be. Um, okay. It shouldn't like it should be like a, a slight a slight deviation, but not like something that kind of pulls you out of the rotation so much. But um, overall, like I'm kind of okay with your laning stage um, because even though it could be like slightly better in terms of CS, um, you get kind of rotated on here on the ogre. Um, you have a ward on you as well, which is fine. Like it's like that was kind of almost a good rotation for them. It just didn't work um, because it's just on the on the moment of when you want to be getting re refreshing. Um, the wards, you kind of ward into sentry there, like which uh, I mean I didn't even spot it. I don't know whether they sentry. I think maybe OD had a sentry on him or what, but that's that's kind of a, a small thing really. One thing, um, I mean I'm not saying that's your fault, but if we just quickly look over the ward positioning as well from yourself. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I want to ask you a question. So when you have a lane ward for like at the start of the game, why why is it there? Like talk to me about it. Uh, gives you high ground vision. Exactly. Um, yeah. And if you want, that's basically it. Basically, I'm mean, obviously it's yeah. there to spot rotations as well. But when you're level seven, and you, do you really need high ground vision? Because why do you need high ground vision really for the first like couple of waves? Um, is it for like creep aggroing? Yes. And... Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So whereas now it's like seven minutes. Yeah. You don't. Your mind really shouldn't be okay. Like, how can I further? Um, like dominate this OD, which in some ways he you haven't dominated him because you probably just have too much too low CS and he still has quite high CS. But you still have a level you still have a level above him, which in some ways is dominating him. You, like around about seven minutes, and sometimes even earlier, depending on the hero, your mind shouldn't be like, okay, I'm going to dominate this mid laner. It should be, how can I maximize my farm? So in some ways, you yeah. don't necessarily need the the lane ward to do your aggro tricks. It should be a to protect me and b to spot out runes. And if you have that in okay. mind, like the ward can be like 
I don't know, like even further away. So they, they in places where they won't won't have a century, like you know, maybe like on this high ground up here. Yeah. So this way it would spot out the rotation from one of the supports from bottom, but also give you a vision of the rune as well. Yeah. Because all your all you should be thinking right now, particularly at seven minutes, because that's when you can get uh, neutral items, should be I'm gonna yeah. push out this wave as fast as possible, pressure the OD's tower if he's not there, if he's jungling himself, but then more so I wanna be hitting neutral creeps so I can maximize my farm. Yeah, like okay. if you see any um, pro mid laner like around about this time and even before that, they they want to be hitting neutral creeps, uh, particularly on radiant because it maximizes their farm. Like they don't really care so much. Like it's the first four waves which I was really focused on about how uh -huh. to play the lane. But after that, it's like okay, actually, you know, just push out the wave and, and do that. You know, get as much as you can. Um, and that just comes from a mindset kind of thing. You know, go on. So it doesn't really matter too much for me to be fixated upon trying to harass this guy out of lane not so much longer. yeah because really like you've kind of efficient, you've right? no a it's not as efficient and two you don't really um it's not the time to do it really the time to do it was like four or five minutes ago where you know the first few okay. cs were, like can really make a difference because now you're like one level above him but he's already level six and it's like the the advantage you have from seven and him being six compared to say you being three and him being one is enormous if that makes sense like you know if you dominate the first four waves like you can basically win the win the game like or win the lane but yeah. dominating it later isn't as impactful because he has levels which are closer to you like just from a purely mathematical standpoint like if he has a hundred and Sorry, if you have 100 and he has 97, obviously the difference isn't as much as, say, if you had, uh, I don't know, uh, 10 and he had 7. Does that make any sense? Like, the, the percentage difference isn't as much, even though it's 3 exactly. more. Does it make sense? So, yeah. it's the same thing being here as well. Like, um, you might be, and you probably still can, um, like, harass him slash kind of dominate him a little bit, but it's not as efficient because the time's gone, you know? Like, now's the time yeah. to maximize your farm. Maybe even, and what you'll see pro teams do as well, I mean, I don't really recommend it, but it might happen in your pub games. Oh, but if you play, you're playing five, man, so it can work because you have communication, yeah? So uh -huh. let's say this bat rider is a prime example, yeah? This bat rider, and this is where mid lane affects other roles as well. So this bat rider, great position five hero, can really dominate the lane, helps your troll enormously, yeah? But he really, at this kind of mid game or where it's kind of phasing out of the laning stage, he needs a place to get levels because if he doesn't get levels in the team fight, he's useless. He's good in the lane because obviously they're sticky, but he needs Makes levels sense. to get. Yeah. So what you can do he is, to get this stage. yeah, but where else he, where he can go? If you're just sitting mid, like he can't jungle, but you can. So it's kind of like alternating the roles, you know? So you push up mid, yeah. go jungle, maybe he can sap, sap mid for experience. And it's something that Secret do okay. a lot. Like I was watching a lot of Secret replays because like my team oh. is playing right now now um and we're like we're like we're like six and a half k so we're like we're like all right yeah but we're no we're good as secret but i was watching loads of secret replays uh -huh. and you have like nisha on some hero that can farm stacks or farm jungle at like six minutes he's like playing heroes like kunkar or, or whatever and they just like go to the jungle level six and then you have like puppy on like some greedy support that needs a lane like bat rider or, or an enchantress yeah and they just sits mid while he's yeah. jungling and like you can jungle pretty effectively you know you have like you know uh, high levels in slight you have high levels in flame guard and you have even fire remnant to kind of swap in between camps you know um yeah so you rotate mid like you know this um let's talk about this rotation so um let's just have to see how it works out so you kill shaman this is all good ogre's gonna rotate as well so um this is fine like you you rotate him um is good but it's you come on need to ask yourself like what can i achieve if you can achieve if I rotate top and we kill whoever's there, do we get the tower off of it? Because in some ways, if yeah. you don't get the tower, I'm in in some ways thinking it's probably not worth it because you got the kill, but it's 150 gold. Like that's the same yeah. as a creep camp in some ways. And so, I mean, obviously, maybe your teams that are TV top, TV top, like yeah, you know, we need you and stuff. Yeah. Um, but go on, uh -huh. you speak, speak your mind. They're uh, they're higher uh, ranked than me, mm -hmm. so sometimes, even though I don't like to do something that they want yeah. me to do. No, yeah, I, uh, I understand or, that. Um, yeah, I just kind of just do do, do it. Yeah. So, but like, so. But I think I think here I made the decision to go up, but then I also regretted it 
immediately yeah, after cause if I you, TP'd in. The only reason why I say that is because if you can TP top and take a tower, then whatever's happening mid doesn't feel as bad. But right now, like, OD is, like, smashing on your tower. He's, like, come yeah. back and see us. And even though you had a good laning stage, he's now 43 and 6 and you're 27 and 6, you know? Like, even though he's yeah. had no impact in terms of kills elsewhere and you're 3 and 0. And, uh -huh. and it's, a, it's a small thing, but, you know, you're, you are more... Uh, your role and you're responsible for, is for the mid lane and not really for anyone else's. Um, so see. if he's getting pressure on your tower and particularly not if you're not really pressuring the enemy tower in terms of killing it you two being top is kind of just a waste um like because all this kind of fighting and all this kind of action really can be happening from your other cores even your carry really i mean i talk about it in my videos all the time about where you the carry wants to rotate to the offlane particularly if action is happening because that's the objective you want um whereas the mid like will rotate but more so like if it's like it's the reactionary versus the proactive opponent like you to be top to f set up it's a like kill a yeah like whereas you want to be engage, you want yeah. to more for a counter engage like obviously it works out in some ways because you get like two kills and stuff and you're pressuring and od does rotate over but in yeah, some ways should, I, when i saw that I, yeah you want to back off but yeah that. yeah he's happy yeah. because it's like really like he should be hitting mid and taking your tower like yeah. if he pressures your tower, because like if you just think about it like the minute you're gone like he probably take your tower like um and if you lose your tower for an for maybe two or three kills it's just not worth it yeah um because of the map pressure that can happen um him to be in top secures the kill on the bat rider like but you know whatever like um and in some ways you're let off um from from him doing that um and i don't mean to over analyze the first nine minutes but it's for mid lane no, no, no. the first nine minutes is like really really important re um so i agree i agree I think that's the part where I really struggle. Um, um, understanding when to rotate and when to, when to shut down my enemy rather than trying to increase my efficiency. Yeah, farming. yeah, and this is um, and this is just comes from kind of like so you always got to ask yourself like the opportunity cost. So it's like okay, me going top, wh what am I losing or what what could I be getting out of it? Um, like Ember. Yeah. Like particularly if you play at mid ember, like engaging and fighting is great, but you almost want to, mm -hmm. particularly in these early engagements, have a reason for doing it. Like, oh, okay, can I get a tower? Uh, am I going to kill like a really important hero, perhaps the OD or whatever? Then, then that's fine. But like, just doing it for the sake of doing it, you know, like you're you're yeah. low on mana, like your know, mid could be pressured. There's going to be bounty, like, or even like you know, fighting for or around bounty runes is a good objective. But you know, to being top for no reason is um is something just to think about. So um. Just like a small thing, um, I mean, maybe it's just from personal preference, but uh, I don't know how you build Ember in this game. But a lot of the Embers nowadays, um, like if you see Topson Ember, I definitely recommend like watching a Topson Ember replay. But he's going like um, like one Wraith Band uh, bottle treads into um, Chrysalis because of the crazy damage you get um, from Chrysalis. I don't know if you watch a lot of sort of pro streams, but like because of the Chrysalis yeah, um, being buffed is insane. But uh, yeah, go on. I've I've tried the treads and I was wondering like like what benefits does it offer other than you know being able to tread stitch and have like faster attack speed uh, it, uh, compared to the phase yeah I mean it, it's a small thing really I mean the one definite thing uh, uh, and probably even in this game as well it, it kind of adds a little bit of kind of stats really like I mean if you think about your hero like you're a thousand HP and you're yeah. even though you're probably not top net worth like if you probably play it correctly you probably would be top net worth yeah like um, uh -huh. or at I least see. close to it and if you are a hero with like particularly in this patch, like if you're top net worth or near or close to it and you die unnecessarily, like the game it just is like feels so much bad because you're getting so much gold away. So like treads give you yeah. like twelve hundred HP, which is a bit more tankability. Whereas going like phase okay. uh, one is like super greedy. Like if you, you die in one stun basically, um and for mm -hmm. a top net worth worth hero you don't necessarily want to be doing it. Um I see. But it's uh, it's a small thing. So you're back to mid. Um, this is like kind of all good. Like um, you're not looking for engagement. So like because this is like right now is kind of almost the time you want to be like going for fights and going for engagements. But you're kind of like you're close to like level 
like level 10, which is where you get like a real big spike because you get like the 25 damage talent. Uh, and with Starter Fist, it kind of really escalates. But because you went yeah. for that in early engagement, you're kind of be like you're kind of behind on some of the timings. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's kind of you're in this two mindsets of like, okay, I want to get engaged, I want to kind of fight, I want to kind of pressure top, but you're also like don't want to leave out mid. And it's, so it's kind of like you're split between two different um, mindsets. And that's almost because of the slight misplay of TB in top, like two or three minutes ago. Yeah. You know, it kind of puts the timings off because you start running top and then you're like, oh, I actually need to deal with mid, which is true. You do need to deal with mid. Um, you go into Chrysalis, which is good. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a little bit of, uh, it's kind of personal preference as well. I'm not, totally against face boots because you know you get 18 damage i mean the arm of this game isn't particularly useful like ricky isn't going to threaten you too much yeah. um but that's another thing like maybe if you're playing against a slada maybe face boots is good but um yeah it's just a small thing like i mean i'm not i don't think it's as important as some of the other things um i've talked about but it's just something that you know a lot of the pro members are doing right now going treads um I've, yeah i've seen it i i tried it myself it i wasn't it, it just didn't feel as good with yeah. no particularly yeah. logical reason. No, no, that's fine. Feel. If you don't, yeah, that's fine. Just, I think it's always important to have a, a kind of a feel for it. Um, so this is a uh -huh. good, this is a good engagement. Um, and there's a slight difference in why it's a good engagement, and it all goes back to kind of 30 seconds ago, where you pushed yeah. pushed out the lane. Yeah, you pushed out the lane. OD is elsewhere, and you're pressuring his tower. Yeah. Then you run to top. Like you compare this to the yeah. other gank where you like the waves pushing into your tower and you TB top and it's like you don't get sacked. Whereas yeah. now, like you're defending a tower as well. So it's all these good things of why you're fighting. And once you kind of I have see. these in your mind of like, okay, like I'm fighting because of X reason, it makes the, the engagement so much better, you know? Um, okay, so da 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 da. Yeah, yeah, you, we killed him. We've seen this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you pressure top, like, uh, and even though you're going to lose mid, most likely. You're getting some kind of trade out of it, and you get all these kills as well. You TP mid as well, and you defend it. So, great, yeah. perfect. So, for um, Go on. so sure. can we? Uh, if I recap in the mm -hmm. laning phase, I I can stack the creeps. Yeah, for sure. Um, like in between. Yes, you can. Like if you if you push out the wave with flame guard, you can do it. But um, one thing that I definitely would recommend, regardless of whether you play Ember or not, if you have a melee hero playing and a quilling blade yeah. before the lane even starts, and if you're just cut it, just cut it yeah. Oh. Like for the, you like if we go yeah. if we go right back to the start of this game, um, like you're just sort of yeah. sitting under tower like. Uh, and I, I yeah, said yeah. you know, and that's fine. You know, I said like obviously you don't really want to be. Um, or whatever, I went too far. Anyway, you get one, the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I said it's fine to um, to block the wave because you're playing against an OD, but um, you don't want to try and say. Uh, but yeah, so definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah cut yeah. this wave because it will increase your efficiency. Like this whole, the first 12 minutes, you didn't hit one jungle creep, which to me is a mistake, really. Um, it's just all about efficiency, um, and it will, you know, you'll be getting chrysalis at like 13, 14 minutes. Uh, which is like two minutes faster than what you're doing, uh, and it makes a big difference. The dilemma that I, sure. the dilemma that I have is, you know, when the wave is going under their tower, mm -hmm. like, do I want to be trying to pressure them by, tra like, trying to last, mm -hmm. trying to deny their last hits and stuff? Because then, uh, is like, is that better than? Yeah. So uh, and it it goes. You know, than getting that sack. Yeah, yeah. So it it goes back to kind of. Um, the timing like you know the first two or three four waves sure do it but after that maybe look to to after stack instead okay. it's like the the in terms of priority your priority will change depending on the time and it kind of uh, study okay. will change over time because the the first three or four waves are so important because you both start at zero zero experience obviously in the first wave and so anything mm -hmm. you can do to deny yeah. that is like um compounded upon even more but after that you want to just that kind of prioritize sense. your your farm uh, and same goes for okay. like pressuring the tower as well say like od is off like doing something elsewhere and you've pushed in the wave should i be hitting the tower or should i be farming the nooch cramp and that is a, a situational yeah. question and it also depends who you're playing if you're playing like a hero like ember and you're not level six you don't have fire remnant you know if they tp in maybe they can catch you they can kill you maybe you should be farming the nooch cramp if you're playing a hero like i don't know that hits towers you know like maybe like lena or a troll warlord for example like you're playing yeah. mid then like you can really benefit and smack the tower really hard you know yeah, um, tower pressure yeah yeah and it's a situation like, but it's like these are the decisions that should be presented to you but because you're not playing okay. the lane almost 
properly, you don't even have the option of doing one or the other. You're just hitting mid, like you're just hitting the creeps from where maybe you should be pushing okay. it out faster. You know, it's all about kind of the priority yeah, right. um, in your mind. Uh, because in some ways, it's not necessarily bad that you choose one or the other. It's that you just have the opportunity to choose one or the other. Like if you if you don't have the choice, then it's like you're you're doing something wrong because you shouldn't be having a choice. You know. Um, yeah. But yeah, um, but that's definitely the the first kind of laning stage. Um, outside, okay. like I, I can analyze more of this game, or if you want to look, I know you said there's a few other um, games you want me to look at as well. I, I don't mind looking more at this game in terms of like uh, it's up to you really. What, what do you? Let me what do you think, want? Uh, if there's anything else in this game, um, can you talk about general like map rotation after mm -hmm. this point in the game? Like obviously when the safe lane, ta the enemy safe lane tower is down, or the mm -hmm. mid. The mid lane safe tower. Sure. The mid lane tower is down. Like, what is the next objective, objective or th understanding? Yeah. So um, I, that's a kind of a situational question um, because it depends uh -huh. on your lineup and the enemy's lineup. Obviously, mm -hmm. the kind of greedier lineup you have, the more defensive you want to play, uh, and also oh, same goes for, for alternatively, if they have a greedier lineup, the more aggressive you want to play. Um, but more, but more, more, more so than not then that kind of just basic plain um, rule is about item timings, yeah? So, like, right now, let's, for example, you're 500 away from Chrysalis. Right now, there's... Yeah. I don't want you to do anything other than hit neutral creeps and wave and the wave till you get this Chrysalis. Because okay. once you have this item, you are, like, 10 times as strong. If you go and fight I now, see. like, maybe you kill someone, sure, but the option is that you might not. And if you die, then you're set back further away from this Chrysalis. And particularly in pro games and the higher um, echelons of Dota, lots of moves will happen not because of like force objective that oh we need to take this tower. It's all about item timings. Okay, we have this item times. Now we can get the objective. Yes, the objective is there, but like you want to be as strong as you can to get those points. You know, I don't know what you do right now, but you yeah looks like you're remnant in for a creep camp. Uh, you look to go back to the wave because pushing out. That's fine. Um, yeah. And, you know, and so it's like, okay, so in terms of, uh, you know, the next objectives, probably the next objective is, is probably a team objective, which is either um, smoking to kill OD or more importantly, like it's just taking this mid tower. But that's kind of a, a team decision. Like you, you as yourself can't do much about it other than wait for your team to make the play. Um But if you're going to make this play or make any kind of play, getting your item before you do it is really, really important. Um that makes sense. So I'm just going to speed this up. Um, so you remnant over. Like this is a good efficiency play. Push out the wave, and then you remnant over. Yeah. Um, they take your tower. Fair enough. But it was dead anyway because of you know the rotation elsewhere. I did, I did tell my team at this point that I needed a, the curse. Yeah. I is think. Good. I mean, you're I you're walking over. So I did like but, I don't mind necessarily, yeah, but it, it's like let, let's just say right. Let's just say Shaman Ricky are like standing behind him right now. Like you both die, and then mm. you're like 50 gold away from Chrysalis. Like. It's yeah. it's one of those decisions where you have to be kind of almost selfish and be like, even if I could get this kill, which I'm not sure yeah. you even do, you, unless you dive really heavily, I'm wondering, yeah, you don't get this kill. Um, it's like, it's just wasted time, you know? And even yeah. though in my mind, really, and probably in your mind as well, you probably thought you won mid lane, um, yet this, this OD is 6k above you. So... Yeah. And really, at the end of the day, whether you win or lose mid comes down to the net worth at like 10, 15 yeah. minutes. It, like, it doesn't um, matter. It doesn't matter. Like. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. really matter. Like these these kills you went top, like you went top for, yes, like you maybe you've given 15 seconds of like a relief to your offlaner. It, how much does that really help? Like your, you know, your brew is still 30, 3k net worth. Like, and it's like, you could be the same net worth as this OD. And it's like, was those first early kills really that important? And in a word, it's not, you know, um, because what's going to happen is like the next five to 10 minutes, there's going to be team fights where that kind of, kind of are going to dictate the, the tempo of the game. And if you're 2K yeah. below or 2K behind, that could be a difference between whether you're winning and losing that team fight, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So it's a small thing, but you got your Chrysalis now. So if there was ever a time to make a play, it's now, yeah? So you TP over, like, you don't technically have Chrysalis in your backpack, so in some ways you don't actually have the net worth I'm talking about, but um, it's still, yeah. at least you don't lose the gold, you know? So even if you die here, it's yeah. not as bad, you know? A team fight happens, um, I, uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and it's, uh, and this kind of just comes from, 
um, kind of game awareness, you know, in terms of like Troll, yeah. it does not want to fight. Like he's going Battle Fury, yeah, which is fair enough. I think it's fine going Battle Fury. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, and this yeah. is the whole idea of, okay, right, uh, what you do and how you play is dependent on the carry, particularly as a mid game, because your role is to sort of set tempo and stuff. But, you know, you can't force tempo. And in scenarios like this, um, it's just, I mean, if we just, if we look, like, let me look at your player perspective, because then I can sort of see what you're like, looking I, I, at. Honestly, right. at this point, when I died, I didn't even realize that you just over. the supports were there. Yeah. Like, so right now, I so let's just look. Yeah. So you see no one on, like, no one's bot, no one's mid. The only people you see is obviously people in vision. So worst case scenario, yeah. all five are top. Best case scenario, it's just those three. Obviously, in this case, all five are there, you know, and particularly when you play five man, like this kind of stuff, um, it's not going to just be these players playing by themselves. They're going to be playing as a team. Um, so if Nyx and yeah. Troll are not ready to fight, then this is a time where you just sack the two members of your team and just leave them be because you end up dying as well. Um, yeah. Obviously, you bought the Chrysalis at least, so you're not going to like be set back from it. Uh -huh. But, you know, now again, it's just kind of like the the... There's a, a chasm between you and OD now, where in really in ways you kind of won the mid lane, or you should have um, kind of mm -hmm. accelerate onwards, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah. So is there anything else you want me to look at um, or talk to you about in this game in general? But um, uh, can I just clarify sure. some things in this sure. game? So sure, sure, sure. in so in the laning phase, um, at least after I've maybe gone to about level four, where the lane was looking good for me. Yeah. I can start stacking, yep. increase my efficiency, and further my experience and gold gap. Yep, exactly. Rather than just the experience alone. Exactly. So, and I'll give you an example as well. So, like, you're playing against an OD. Um, so, you, if you push in the wave, like, he can't, basically, he can't farm the way you farm. Uh, so, if you're, like, pushing up the wave and going into the jungle, like, it's been stacked or whatever, that means then he then has to deal with a creep wave under his tower. And so, like, yeah. he's forced to deal with that creep wave, so he can't then go and farm a neutral cramp. So, in some ways, you just farm a creep wave and a neutral cramp, and he's only farmed a, mm -hmm. a creep wave. Um, and particularly okay. in a matchup where you shouldn't really be winning. Yeah. So, in that way, like, you're doubly winning. Uh -huh. Like, let's say if you're yeah. like, uh, obviously, it depends on the matchup as well. Like, because if you're playing maybe a, a Lena versus, I don't know, a weaker hero that you can contest then yeah sure yeah. i don't mind you particularly for the first few minutes or the first few waves like denying every wave and not going because like you punishing the mid laner is more important than maximizing your farm but when it comes to like mm -hmm. six seven minutes um you know just forget about it like you've always you've already had your chance to dominate him if you haven't dominated in that time period just focus on farming now mm -hmm. because as i said to you before like you if you're going to beat od it's going to be in the game not necessarily in the lane you know because you just don't have the skill set mm -hmm. you know okay you're not going to be able to see. deny him like every week yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but gone any more so questions the, yeah go on. so the general thing is if i uh, if i can consistently shut him down like every time he shows up to lane yes i kill, I kill him yeah then that's the ideal play but exactly if not, then Yep. Go increase your efficiency. Exactly. Yeah. Or not necessarily okay. even kill him, but just say you can deny every creep wave because if he comes up, he's going to die. Then yeah. do that. Okay. Do that as well, you know. But, you know, even if the creep wave is on your heel as an ember and OD walks up, like, what are you going to do to pressure him? Like, you're going to slight a little bit, but then he's just going to astral you and then he's going to CS or, you know, just how it normally goes up. I see. Um, you know, I think that yeah. I, I've been playing the Void Spirit and I think, I think that's probably why I'm having a little bit more success on that hero mm -hmm. because I feel like he off he offers a lot of kill threat yeah, every time for the sure. mid laner shows up back. Exactly. Yeah so yeah. So I'm playing this Ember Spear like the Void Spirit when I shouldn't exactly. be because yes. I'm not recognizing exactly. that. And, that, and that's the matchup, and that's also to do with just understanding, okay, and also Ember probably farms better than uh, Void Spirit as well, because the Flame Guard is consistent, it's not just the uh, the, the shield once, yeah. you know, um, so like Ember farms better, but Void Spirit has more kill threat on the lane, so it's kind of like that balance between the two, you know, so in some ways then like Ember you want to farm more, Void Spirit you want to crush mid more, you know, it's that kind of that mindset between the two. Um, but are we done with this game, or did you want to... Anything else you want to talk about? Or... Uh, let me see. Um, here's a really bad game that I played. Sure. Um, I honestly just didn't know what to do in this matchup at all. It was... Uh... Let me see.
think that is the match ID. Perfect. This one I played against a um, Underlord mid, and I think it's also my uh, inexperience with just understanding Underlord as a hero and how to counter this hero, because mm -hmm. he just feels so strong, you know? Mm -hmm. So sorry, you were um, playing against Underlord mid, would you? Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, usually oh, you play in yeah, Underlord okay. offlane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the thing is... That's fun. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, it's like, just in general, this hero, uh, maybe you can yeah, educate yeah. me on that. So, yeah, I get it's kind of... Uh, i him a lot. Yeah, okay, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like, what, it's like Samal, TI9, isn't it? He played quite a few Ember, or oh, Underlord mids, actually, and it's kind of interesting. But, oh, really? uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the hero is a is a really strong laner actually. Um, he can pressure you like he can out CS you because he has really high base damage and can pressure you with the the flame guard, uh, flame storm as well. It's not uh, a conventional mid, but um, once you understand the principles of who you're playing against, you don't necessarily need to know every single uh, matchup. Like, I mean, I don't expect you to know inside and out every tiny um, kind of. Uh, discrepancy between the two but if you have a general understanding or principle of like okay this guy does this then i can do this you know um but i'm loading into the game now i uh i also had a question because sure. I, I like I, I told you um i had another coaching session with someone else mm -hmm. and uh i can't was, believe you i'm joking he was explaining i'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm yeah keep, sorry i, I was joking <laughs> oh, yeah, i, was, I, I can't believe you going to someone else no, i'm joking it's like oh, yeah. yeah yeah go yeah no i'm honestly like i learned so much from everyone yeah no no i'm only joking it really it's matter. good yeah it's good yeah. man soaking in the but, knowledge uh, is great but go on sure um um he's this bulgarian player uh, slash strike you said yeah was, yes slash strike yeah, yeah he's good he's good he um he was telling me that in this this one game where i played against an uh underlord I think it was Underlord Riki also, but mm -hmm. Underlord in the offlane. Mm -hmm. He was telling me, he was asking me like in this like scenario, like who would you pressure like as Ember, you know, if mm -hmm. you had the opportunity to in the mid game. Mm -hmm. And you know, originally like me and my friends, we all we all we would all think like he would pressure the Riki, but he says in actuality you want to pressure the the Underlord in the mm -hmm. early game. And he was saying that. Uh, because if you don't do that, the Underlord's going to be able to make space for this Riki to farm anyway. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can shut down the Riki, and, but he'll still like do the same thing as he originally would do, which is mm -hmm. you know, f um, fight when the fights are good or get his defusal, right? Like those are his two things. Yeah. Um, but if you shut down the Underlord, it effectively weakens their entire team. Like, what what is your uh, stance on that? Yeah, so I mean, I think it... Yeah, I think in some ways that's I think that's correct mindset. It's like it's whether you because like Ricky doesn't have flash farming capabilities, yeah. So obviously, if you shut down someone that can make space for him, then you can in some ways inadvertently or indirectly shut him down. Um, so he's he's right in, in sort of saying that. Uh, I'm just looking. I was just looking at the the kind of player perspective from from Underlord here. I'm wondering if he, he spots you with this ward. So obviously you're placing a ward right now, but I'm only pulling this up. I'm looking in the perspective from the Underlord, so I'm wondering if he sort of sees you or not. Uh, I don't think he does, I actually. Little... Oh, no, he hasn't. You I don't know it. if I went stat items. Yeah, I didn't. No, this game. I, regret, I regret it a lot I'm because just it was, uh, he got a lot of denies in my lane. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I, the only reason why I'm pulling this up is because the way you run uh, as an Ember, it's really, like, it's a small thing, but when you go and place this ward, it's really, really important that you um, place the wards from Fog. Um, so in this scenario, yeah, this this uh, this ward has already been placed by the Underlord. You were late, um, for whatever reason, to place a ward. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I don't think it does spot you, but it's very, very close. I see. Uh, you can see this vision here. And no, so yeah. you weren't spotted. But let's say yeah. this ward is on this side instead, yeah? Then he spots you doing that. And it's a small thing yeah. um, because in this matchup, anyway, it's melee versus melee. So we talked about how uh, the uh, you know lane equilibrium, whatever, doesn't matter, or the, the high ground isn't as important yeah. as other matchups in, say, range. But mm -hmm. let me tell you, if you get your ward denied, particularly by the enemy mids, and he gets the gold and experience, like that can really swing a lane, particularly in early, because it gives like oh. nearly the amount, same amount of gold and experience as a whole creep wave. Um, and obviously what you did oh, here, yeah, it's, it's not as much, it's about 120, <laughs> it's about 120. So yeah. creep wave is about 150. So um, so obviously what you do here is you go, like, water is fine, but 
I want you to do it from this side. If you go from behind the trees and then place it behind yeah, the trees, the, there's no way he sees it. Because if he if he had the ward on the left side, he'd see you, hit by a sentry himself, and then just kind of have a big advantage to start with, I or see. get someone else to be given the sentry, or you know, yada yada. Because it I makes was just kind of on autopilot. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Ward, which is bad. No, it's fine. Yeah. It's just like it's just like it, I've seen it happen in higher tier games where people just get their ward dewarded instantly, and it's like, oh, gg, like, it's, you know. and, yeah. And some matchups, it makes it, it means more as well. Like, say if you were melee versus range and you can't um, do the aggro trick, it'd be bad. But in this game, it's not so bad. It's just like it's more thing okay. to work. Um, yeah, again, the items I talked about before about maybe. Um, for some reason, I can't out click. Um, yeah, like you didn't go. For some reason, I still have this clicked and it's not coming off. I think I might have to re do this replay. Sorry, <laughs> there's a ward bug. Um, but yeah, so obviously you bought the the south to start with instead of um, yeah. put it on courier. And actually, in this in this matchup, you're actually gonna um, regret it a little bit much because in this matchup against Underlord, he, he can he has a lot of damage. So any kind of base stats you can get um, to start with, you need to get because you're going to struggle to outlast hit, hit him. Okay. Um, because particularly yeah. he's he went um, he's passive as well, so it reduces your your damage by even more. Um, and yeah. as a, as a melee versus melee, Underlord um, does win a lot of matchups. So kind of getting any kind of benefit you can is going to be important because um, otherwise you're going to get your whole creep wave denied and it's not going to be very fun. So From a like very micro strategy, like how would you, where would you want the wave in this matchup, the very first wave and... How would you approach the uh, very first wave? The like? first wave is exactly doing this because um, you okay. want it as chaotic as possible. Um, because in an ideal scenario, like just say you do nothing, yeah. Say the, the the lane is completely static. You do nothing. You don't harass him. You just try and uh, you try and go for CS and you try and um, compete yeah. with him for CS. He will beat you a hundred times of a hundred because right now he has ninety damage plus Quillen Blade. So that's ninety. Oh, uh, well, I think it's a hundred and one. I think is that. A so ninety three yeah. plus eighteen. Yeah, hundred and one. And you have. 56 plus 18 so i don't know my maths is about 74 i think so it's you know significant. Yeah, yeah it's a significant <laughs> difference yeah so um you will never as long as you are equal footing you'll never be able to get an equal cs with him so you want to make it as chaotic, chaotic yeah. as possible and you want to do this as well where you flame guard push the first wave in and hit him so that he then has to decide whether you're going to hit him for free or he's going to get cs so you got to make him decide so this is fine yeah um do uh -huh. Go on. Do you think that it's even worth it to maybe just creep aggro constantly so that the creeps like yeah to your tower? Yeah, that's fine as well. Just so that you don't lose that. Yes, definitely. Experience. Because like right now, like he's already he's zero and yeah. two, and like and it's just very it's very difficult, yeah. Because like if the lane is static, it, you're not gonna and also it makes it worse every time he gets a creep as well. It's even higher because it just goes more and more. Yeah. So yeah, it's bad basically. Um. So what 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 you can do is yeah like. In some ways, this is good, but that creep over there actually might hurt. I don't think it will hurt you, but I just want to talk to you about it quickly. That mm. creep aggro you did right there uh, when okay. is is bad, the, and the, the reason the tower... yeah the reason why uh, is for reasons I will just explain now, and it's a small okay. thing. Right, so right now, so. Remember how in the last uh, game I talked to you about, obviously, you're in an unfavorable matchup um, and, you know, you wanted the lane to be bouncing and ping-ponging uh, behind towers, yeah? yeah? Um, so right now, you know, assuming everything goes good, it's fine. When you do this aggro trick right there, what that means is these creeps, these radiant melee creeps are no longer hitting your uh, dire creeps because you just aggro pulled. Yeah, so oh, that means okay, yeah. your dire creeps will now uh, live longer. Live longer. Yeah, yeah, which in some ways you want them to to die as quickly as possible, so then it will bounce back to your tower. Not only that, I don't think it will happen in this example here, but in in some scenarios I've seen it happen where you aggro pull yeah. so much that these radiant creeps will then get to say the river. And then they will fight these creeps here, which you want. You don't want to happen, do you? You want your dire creeps to go again no, under tower, don't. yeah? Because if it goes under okay. tower, then it will push back. Obviously, it doesn't really yeah. happen here. But you see, if I if I click on the tower here, 
like the tower radius. Oh, you can't see it for some reason, but it's like just it's right here. Like just it's just within range. Yeah, like the your creeps are just yeah. in range. If you did that one more time, uh, the tower the the creep uh, equilibrium will be just out of tower range, which would be terrible for you because you want the lane to push in mm -hmm. so it comes back to you. Yeah, so it, it's just understanding when you should creep pull and when you should do the aggro trick and when you shouldn't. Um, obviously, yeah, aggro trick in there is different because. This CS, you need to get it, and you won't get it unless you aggro creep it. And obviously, the, your creep wave's already in their tower. Um, yeah. But the one you did previously, you weren't trying to go for a CS. You were just doing it out of force of habit. I was just doing it. Out of force of habit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you could have maybe aggro tricked again there, but yeah, whatever. Um, yeah. You can, uh, you're can. probably not going to get this one, but you might be able to deny. You trade denies. This is good. Um, and... Okay, this is not so bad. And again, um, and he's blocking again. So gone. What are you gonna say? Uh, shoot, what was I gonna say? I forgot. Just continue. <laughs> no worries. So this wave, this is yeah. the thing, the third wave thing now, and it's back to the same as basically uh, creep wave one, uh, which you did the right thing. You just flame guard and try and push it out. Um, but it just goes back to maybe the 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 wave before. Like if if your creep wave so um. Uh, dies or survives a little bit longer, then the equilibrium is either in your tower or in their tower. Yeah, and then obviously in the matchup, you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, it, these things make a difference, you know. Um, so in this game, you go actually wraith band um, before rushing bottle. Um, talk to me about to that item decision. I went that because I was like having such a hard time last hitting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Like that's good. Yeah, yeah. it's good. It's the right decision. Um, and so. Uh -huh. um, but then, like, knowing that you're going to go for the Wraith Band, maybe you have Slippers and Circlip before, uh, at the start of the game, instead of buying Salve at the start of the yeah, game. I yeah, I, and I, it's... I definitely do that build sometimes, but I, I didn't think about it yeah. this game. And it's just having that yeah. kind of, that foresight, you know. Uh -huh. um, so, yeah, so that's kind of the, the basics of the lane. Like, as long as you do that, this... Um, uh -huh. This lane isn't as bad as as it could be. So now your creep wave is under tower. Like uh, you kind of block your wave, uh, which in some ways you, you know, either you want to block it so much that it gets into your tower, or you want to push it out. Um, okay, you're like flame gliding for the wave. Rune is top. You go and take it, then I take the lucky. CS, which is good. You got lucky, you got regen, but it's definitely the white way forward. Get a nice slight hit on the CS there as well. Uh -huh. It's all good. So right now, okay, stop. Uh, oops, stop. Just stop right there. So you hit level three, you got regen, you got pretty lucky. It's a nice rune, it helps you out so yeah. much. So, right about now, uh, is you got level three. What should you be thinking right now? Well, you have flame guard I should, in. I should static here, right? Uh, no, the opposite actually. You have flame guard yeah. up in two seconds. I'd flame guard right now, push this wave. He's already salving, so push, you, yeah. he can't contest oh, okay. you. You. you you uh, you flame guard. You got two points in flame guard, which I think is the right thing. I think Max and flame guard in this lane is good as well, because you don't want to be. You can't really harass him because he's a strength hero. He has soul ring. He's going to have good yeah. high regen. You just want to maximize your farm again, similar to the last lane where you just want to push out wave and go farm jungle. Mm -hmm. Radiant is a bit better than dire, but you can still do it with dire by farming this creep here. Yeah. So you just flame guard, push this wave, and go farm this camp because. Uh, you have creep wave advantage and their creep wave is just spawning and you'll have enough time to kill this wave uh, and get back to the wave when the second wave comes. Um, but instead, you don't flame guard, you start a fist and he just denies, he can deny every one of these creeps, which he basically does. He probes that one, denies that one. Yeah. Um, you're going to flame guard this wave as well. Uh, now you have creep advantage, you're going to sort of, he counts kind of low. But it's like, obviously, yeah. it's like it's just the you're not giving yourself the opportunity to even go for the creep wave because you're not um, trying to your your mindset should be pushing this wave as quick as possible. Instead, you're trying to like every single wave. Yeah, right? basically every single wave, particularly yeah. now because like he has two points in Atriora, and like now instead yeah. of it being like a, a twenty base damage advantage, he has like a uh -huh. forty base damage advantage almost. Like do you know what I mean? So it's uh, it's like okay. huge, like because he's got two points in yeah. Atriora now. Yeah. Um. So the only way you get CS is by flame guarding, basically. Um. Again, you're kind of mm -hmm. like he's low now, like which in some ways that's his fault yeah like he should have a salve out like 
Because yeah. if he has a salve out, this creep wave, like you can't do anything on this creep wave. But luckily you can because he doesn't have a salve on him. Like um and, and this is what I'm saying, like against better players, like this kind of play style won't work because they'll just abuse yeah. you by like right. salving and then destroying your whole creep wave and then you're being inefficient because you're just gonna sit on the high ground watching him take every single CS when you could be getting does, the creep wave. Go on. Does he have enough damage to um I think the reason why held flame guard was uh, what if he firestorms and melts away my flame guard? So but, you're gone. But does it do that? that so much damage uh, damage level one, thing? level one, uh, you'll be in trouble if he does that. At uh, level two, it's not so bad because you get like triple magic absorb, um, and also uh -huh. like. As long as you're not sitting in it, it's not as bad. Like if yeah. you look at the damage, okay. it's like uh, 40 per wave, yeah, plus uh, the burn 40, damage as well. Uh, so it's like you have okay. 40, 80, 20. Like Johnny, you have like four or five, but maybe three or four. I don't know the exact number because I don't play against Underlord that much. Mm -hmm. But it's about like three yeah. or four ticks before it goes out, yeah. Which obviously is bad. You don't want the flame guard to be ticking out, but it will give I you. Just it can give you. It and it's uh, six. Okay, so yeah, so you got quite a lot. Okay. You know, do you know what I mean? So it's kind of like you know, yeah. and that's a small thing, but just, don't sit um, just okay. as long as you don't sit in it, like um, you'll be fine. Um, so okay. you know, and you know, after three or four waves with flame guard plus light of fist, the wave should be dead anyway, so you can just walk out. You know, um, got it. Uh, so you're gonna go. Oh, okay. go on. Got yeah, it. so he doesn't now like, yeah. uh, but like because he uses that, like he then has control of the creep wave because he does that. You know. Um, Whereas you have this creep wave control because you do that, you know, and you know, it's manning up. Um, it does die there, obviously. When you get level 5, it's going to be better. You get the DD, which is good. This is going to help you in the lane a lot. This is, where, uh -huh. Go on. this is where I shouldn't have skilled that sleight of fist, right? I should have... Or actually, I don't have a choice. Yeah, you're skills. level 4, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kidding. So, um... This is, I don't, this is where I should be looking to stack. Yeah, you can stack now, yeah, because the thing yeah. is, as well, is like, so, uh, like I said to you before, it's all about kind of efficiency. So, this creep wave it gives you about 150 gold. This creep count will probably give you about maybe 90, but if you stack it, then it's 180. Awesome. So, even if you have to, and you won't lose a whole wave, like, you will lose one or two creeps by killing this creep count, but if it's stacked yeah. and you have Flame Guard on, you'll kill it, come back, and then still have a chance to contest the other, maybe, two, two uh, remaining CS, and you'll get more farm out of it not only that but it's safer so if the other one of the team wants to rotate at that time you won't be there in lane yeah. and secondly there's a chance that he'll be able to deny this creep wave and seeing he's maxing atrophy aura he probably will get a cs yeah. or two so it's better that you just get guaranteed farm then like potentially nothing at all you know it's that kind of safety um yeah. and you know like just because right now like you're you're just hoping that you're the better player and you right click the cs before him but obviously in an equal That's skilled matchup it's not it's like, oh i'm <laughs> yeah. gonna be able to right click faster than him and it's like it maybe it will yeah. work but against like an equally skilled player like he won't let that happen you know obviously you have dd now so it's a bit different but now it runs out if he but also yeah. if he pushes the wave then sure but what i do right now again you have you have flame guard just bring the creep wave over to you into the creep camp, and then you can farm both at the same time. You don't oh, need yeah, to. Right. You don't need to farm this under the tower. Like you have flame guard level three, bring it over here, and that's the efficiency play right there. Yeah. Um, I see. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's just it's just a small thing, but you know you because your job as a mid laner is either to maximize your farm and defend your tower, but you can do both of those things by just pulling the wave into your, I see. your tower. You know. I don't think about that. Um, okay. Another small thing as well is you'll see you're particularly in this patch where the bounty runes are in such when you play Dire, uh, less so than yeah. you play Radiant because it's a bit further away. When you play Dire, um, getting Bottle and getting the bounty runes at five minutes is like yeah. really, really useful because it just kind of gives you like two free refills. Uh, and it, sure. in this and yeah. in, in other matchups where you need the regen, in this one it's not so bad. You can kind of. Um, I've, I've seen uh, Thompson where. If he's playing on the dire side, he'll even just push out the wave to go for yeah. the enemy radiant. Exactly, yeah. So things like that. And it's consistently yeah. I've seen him doing a lot. And I think it's yeah. good because not only does it deny it, but it also gives him um sustain in the lane, which sometimes you need, you know. Um so like you compare like your like so this I think this underlord has been jungle. I think he jungled a little bit already.
Yeah, like he's jungling right now, yeah? So, like, and this is the difference between why his CS is 32 and why yours is 22, yeah? It's because he's been farming this side camp and you haven't been. Um, was, and... was that the main reason why the OD in the last game also was CSing higher than me? Yeah, was it, I think so. I mean, I, I, was... I, wasn't wa I wasn't watching the OD, but it does make yeah. a difference, you know? And uh, and that's why the CS is a bit, 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 a bit high and he's, like, a level above you, you know? Okay. Um, Got it. I think that's... Uh... The general thing that I need to... Yeah, just to honestly look look to, to be farming um, neutral crams because, like, let's say the first five, the next five games you play, like, maybe you'll focus yeah. too much on neutral cramps, but then, like, it's like it'll force you to realize, like, I don't know if you watch BSJ, but I really like the way he uses I rules, rules and exceptions, yeah. yeah? So the rule is, yes. like, hit neutral creeps when you can you know and then the exception will yeah. be the times you'll learn you'll learn through the exceptions by doing the rule and the rule is like pushing out waves go and hit neutral camps like in some scenarios maybe it's best not to do it but you'll it's easier to learn the rule and then learn the exceptions than the other way around you know um so i do like his well, i think we did i think we did discuss the exception right yeah it was to if you can shut down the enemy and exactly or prioritize tower pressure exactly then... That yeah, would be the exception. exactly, um, and that's the kind of understanding uh, you need to have. And because I think outside of that, your like your lane mechanics are pretty good. You know, like what were you? You like I think you, you said you were ancient. Yeah, or a little bit lower um, than that, or whatever it is. Like, I think like your your mechanics are actually not that bad. It's the kind of the mindset that you need to play along with it. Um, and I can guarantee yeah. you, if you have this mindset and this kind of understanding conceptually, um, mm -hmm. you will like win so many more games because you have so much more farm. You know, like. Uh, particularly in the early games um yeah I, I mean that's definitely why i was looking for coaching because i just i knew that i didn't understand what was what i needed to do yeah and i just needed someone to tell me yeah like, and what is exactly. how should i think about this? yeah yeah but i think like you, you know your mechanics are pretty good like um and you know once you now know these kind of conceptual things uh -huh. i think it will help a lot like don't get me wrong like i, I don't expect you to be like 10 15 cs above this underlord because you know your hero is not designed to do that, but um, you do this, you'll you'll lower the gap, and because at the end of the day, like if you go equal in the lane between an underlord and ember spirit, for me personally, like, I would definitely prefer an ember spirit on my team than an underlord mid. You know, if you have equal yeah. CS, but um, in this game, like he's beating you on CS because only by a little bit, um, and that's because you know you're not doing the the, the neutral things, you yeah. know, and it's um, you know it's a small thing, but uh, it makes a uh, you know. Makes a difference, really. Um, okay. But have you got any more questions? Because that's about uh, sort of time. That's um, good, because uh, I actually have to leave oh, um, sweet. No worries, um, right about now, too. So it's perfect. Cool. I think, uh, no, I, it, what you went over was extremely helpful. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really appreciate that you took the time to go over the detail of each wave, how, how would I approach it, and also... Give me the different scenarios, even though like I give you a matchup where I won mm -hmm. and what I could fix. Yeah, I thought that was extremely helpful. And that's what I wanted. Yeah, no, play. yeah, because obviously, like, it get, it, Dota is such a situational game. Like, it's going to be different. But if I can yeah. teach you the principles, then you'll know what to do in different yeah. scenarios. You know, which is a big, a big thing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and cool. I've taken some notes on it, so that's sweet. If you've got any perfect. more random questions you want to ask me, or are we. Uh, okay. There? If you've got any more questions, or you're good. Oh no! For for now, I'm yeah. good. Yeah, thank cool. you. Cool. No worries, man. I'm glad. I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I uh, hope uh, to. What, what's come... your name again? I don't think I got your name. Uh, Jake. 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 Or Mini, Jake. mini okay. TV. Thank whatever. You, so much, you know. No worries, man. Okay. Mini TV. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. You know. Um, no worries, All man. Right. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope to see you soon. Catch you later. Okay. GG, yeah. man. Uh, thanks again, and uh, I'll let you know if uh, if I want another coaching sure. session. Sure. No worries, man. I'll see you around. All right. GG. Bye. -bye. Uh, see you. Right, guys, that was just a brief um, overview of some of mechanics of the mid lane. Hopefully, you were able to enjoy that uh, and get some kind of benefit out of it. I know I went over a few topics quite a few times and um, was a li little bit stumbly in places, but hopefully, uh, the gist of the video, you might have found something um, to benefit yourselves from. But other than that, guys, um, if you want any more coaching, um, give me a buzz or DM and uh, I'll hit you back. Till then, guys, keep keen biting and grinding. Peace.